Since we reported our first uh, COVID-19 case, our country, Kenya, has recorded some 830 confirmed infections that has led to 50 deaths. Indeed, fellow Kenyans, it is disturbing to note that close to 30% of these recorded deaths occurred at home. I'll take this opportunity on behalf of all Kenyans to send my heartfelt condolences to the families and friends of those that we have lost to this pandemic. The life of every single Kenyan is precious. And I, together with millions of Kenyans, mourn the lost dreams that have been cut short so suddenly by this disease. We all emphasize with the tears and misery of those that have been left behind. And we pray that God will take them into his embrace and continue to comfort their loved ones. On a more positive note, I am delighted to note that due to the dedication and commitment of our healthcare workers, we have discharged some 301 individuals from our health facilities, all having registered full recovery since the onset of this pandemic. And there are now 481 cases that are currently undergoing treatment. I want to thank once again the dedicated and skilled Kenyans who are working around the clock to keep our infections relatively low so far. And I also want to thank the tens of millions of Kenyans who are adhering to the health, hygiene, and social distancing measures that have been put in place by our health officials. Fellow Kenyans, if we had not taken tough steps, the Public Health Emergency Operations Center calculates that there would be many thousands of infections across the country, and indeed, many more fatalities. It is, however, clear that we have still to deliver a fatal blow to this enemy that has afflicted our country and the world at large. In the last week, we have unfortunately witnessed an increased number of imported cases among individuals crossing into the country through our borders. And these new areas have become a matter of grave concern to us. Among the positive cases that have been registered in the country this last week, a total of 43 cases have recently crossed the border from neighboring Somalia and Tanzania. As of yesterday, the cases that have crossed the border were distributed as follows. Wajia had 14 cross-border cases. Zebania had 10 cross-border cases. Namanga had 16 cross-border cases. Lunga Lunga had two, and Loitoktok one. These 43 cases represent almost a quarter of the 166 confirmed infections during this last week. Further to this, 
68, so sorry, 78 truck drivers who are foreign nationals tested positive for COVID-19. They were denied entry into our territory at different border crossings. If we had not undertaken that intervention, the imported cases through our borders would today have accounted for more than 50% of this week's infections. Within our borders, infections have now spread to 22 of our 47 counties. These numbers and the spread of infection clearly indicate that if no action is taken, all the gains already achieved in combating this pandemic will undoubtedly be lost. I want to be very plain today, and I want every single Kenyan to understand what is our immediate future. We have a brutal and unforgiving enemy in our midst. This enemy is trying to gain entry using every door, every window, every crack. He's asking every single Kenyan to sneak him in so that he can attack all of us. He multiplies his forces rapidly with one infected person able to infect dozens of others if insufficient measures are not put in place. Of all of us, if we do not heed to the dangers and behave accordingly, a lot shall be lost, as we have seen in other parts of the world. Given enough opportunities, this enemy will lay waste to our families, to our children, our parents, our neighbors, and our friends. He will find the least aware amongst us and use them to carry his fateful disease to our most vulnerable. Today, globally, this disease has claimed over 300,000 innocent lives. And as of this morning, over 4.7 million infections have been recorded across the globe. In some instances, we have seen this disease grow from just a few hundred cases to hundreds of thousands of cases in the space of a month, causing tens of thousands of fatalities. If we do not take additional precautionary measures and get even more serious in implementing existing guidelines, the number of people who will get sick and die is going to rise very sharply. I know that Kenyans are concerned about the impact this disease is going to have on our economy, especially on those sectors that are linked to foreign trade, foreign travel, and production. And even though the measures we are putting in place are inconvenient to all of us, the far worse outcome, fellow Kenyans, is for this pandemic to grow out of control. The cities and countries where it has raged out of control have suffered near economic collapse due the, to the terror and the paralysis that this disease causes. Economies far greater than ours are facing their worst economic situation 
in many, many years. I know that there is growing pressure from amongst our people. There is growing global pressure for easing of measures against this disease and for all of us to get back to normal. Indeed, one of the tasks that I gave our National Emergency Response Committee on Coronavirus was to undertake a close look at reopening our economy even further. However, their examination of what has happened across the world has found countries like Singapore, Germany, Ghana, that initially had done very well when they eased their restrictions, they suffered very dangerous spikes in new rates of infection. I, like you, am just as anxious for us to get back to normal, to get back to building our country. However, I also strongly believe that we will only be able to do this the sooner we sharply suppress the growth of infections in our country. We are therefore going to step up our defense by deploying stricter, more localized prevention actions. We will also review some of the previous concessions and directives to ensure that they are better complied with. So therefore, fellow Kenyans, in accordance with the advice by the National Emergency Response Committee on Coronavirus and our National Security Council, I am today directing as follows, that there will be a cessation of movement of persons and any passenger, passenger ferrying automobiles and vehicles into and out of the territory of the Republic of Kenya through the Kenya-Tanzania international border, except for cargo vehicles with effect from midnight tonight, Saturday the 16th, May 2020. There shall also be a cessation of movement of persons and any passenger ferrying automobiles and vehicles into and out of the territory of the Republic of Kenya through the Kenya-Somali international border, except for cargo vehicles. And this also will take effect from midnight today, Saturday the 16th, May 2020 that all drivers of cargo vehicles shall be subjected to mandatory COVID-19 disease testing and will only be granted entry into the territory of the Republic of Kenya if they test negative. That the nationwide dusk to dawn curfew that is currently in force will be extended for a further period of 21 days up to and until the 6th of June, 2020. That the cessation of movement into and out of the Nairobi metropolitan area and the counties of Kilifi, Kwale, Mombasa, and Mandera that is currently in force shall also be extended up to and until the 6th of June, 2020. The government will continue to take every measure that it can to protect the lives of Kenyans from this pandemic and to plan also for the recovery of our economy post the crisis. The whole world is walking through the valley of the shadow of death. However, I know and I believe that with God's favor and strength and with the firmness and resolve 
of our nation, as well as the fidelity of each and every one in keeping the enemy at bay, God's enduring grace will see us into the light. We will emerge knowing that we have a mighty strength in our unity and our resilience as a people shall see us through this most difficult period. Nataka kumaliza kwa kusema kwa wenzangu. Tulianza kupambana na huu ugonjwa karibu miezi mbili iliyopita. Na nataka tena kushukuru wale wote ambao wamehusika wametusaidia kuokoa maisha ya maelfu ya wakenya ambao wangeangamia kama sio yale tuliyofanya kujaribu kuzuia huu ugonjwa kuenea katika nchi yetu Najua wenzangu ya kwamba wengi wanaona kama wamechoka na wangependa maisha irudi vile ilikuwa. Lakini wenzangu na mimi sitaki niwadanganye. Wale ambao wamekataa kuona huu ugonjwa kama ni kitu cha kweli nataka tu muangalie makaburi ambayo imechimbwa dunia mzima kuzika maiti za watu jukumu la kwanza la serikali ni kuhakikisha ya kwamba tumelinda maisha na mali ya wananchi kwangu mimi ningekuwa nimewaangusha wa Kenya nisipowaambia wenzangu ukweli vile ulivyo huu ni ugonjwa ambao unachukua maisha tukisema ya kwamba wenzetu kama umetoka eneo ambao ugonjwa ni mwingi Jameni kaa utulie na upige report kwa maofisa wa afya lakini usichukue jukumu la kwenda kupeleka huu ugonjwa kwa wenzako jamii familia baba babu mama nyumbani mtu ambaye hayana hatia yoyote isipokuwa kukupenda na kukaribishe kwake na we umwachie ugonjwa na uweke maisha yake hatarini nataka niwaeleze kuhusu kijana moja kwa sababu yeye alikuwa amejiona yeye ameshinda askari ameponyoka amepita roadblocks ametoka kutoka Mombasa ameenda mpaka Gadiani Machakos na anajipigia makofi ya vile yamefaulu kufika Gadiani mahali ambapo huo ugonjwa hukuwa umesikika ameambukiza dadake na hatujui ni watu wangapi huko Gadiani ambaye sasa dadake pia ameambukiza kujipenda kulipo kupenda wale ambao wanakupenda wenzangu mimi nataka niwaambie ya kwamba huu ugonjwa ni hatari na yale masharti ambayo tumetoa lazima tuyatimize kama wakenya na sio tu kwa sababu twataka kuumiza mtu yeyote la sisi wote tungependa turudi makanisani 
turudi kwa shughuli zile tulikuwa tunafanya kwa kifamilia na kwingine lakini huu ni muda kama kweli wapenda jamii yako wapenda mamako wapenda babako wapenda dada yako ndugu yako watoto wako njia ya kuwaonesha unawapenda ni kukaa mbali na wao na ndipo mimi nashukuru makanisa misikiti mapadre maimams na mapasta wetu ambao wameendelea wakijua taabu ya huu ugonjo lakini kupitia runinga internet na mambo mengine waendelea kuhubiri na kutupatia neno la Mungu na kutuweka sisi wote wa Kenya mbele ya mikononi ya Mwenyezi Mungu atuondolee hii shida tungependa pia tukutane kila siku kwa makanisa kila Jumapili vile tulikuwa tunaenda lakini kwa sasa jameni hatuwezi na tumewaambiwa na wataalamu wote dunia mzima ya kwamba njia pekee ya kujikinga na huu ugonjo ni kila mmoja wetu awe anavaa hizi masks ambazo tunajaribu sana sana kusambaza kwa kila mkenya awe na moja awe anaweza kuwa navaa ya kukaa mbali mita mbili kwa mwenzako kwa kusafisha mikono yetu kila siku na kila saa mbele ya kuingia shughuli zetu mbalimbali na tumejaribu sana kwa sababu bado sehemu nyingi za uchumi wetu tumeweza kuziwacha ziendelee na hatutaki kufika kiwango ambacho wengine wamefika kufunga inchi mzima na kusema wa Kenya msitoke nje au wananchi muzitoke nje kila mtu akae nyumbani kwake hatutaki kufika hiyo kiwango na ndipo nasema huu ugonjwa hauwezi kushindwa na serikali peke yake inatuhitaji sisi wote kila mmoja wetu afanye jukumu lake atende jukumu lake apende mwenzake na njia ya kupenda mwenzako ni kutii yale masharti ambayo tumepatiwa na wale ambao wanahusika haswa maofisa wetu wa afya. Kwa hivyo wa Kenya wenzangu, tuendelee kumuomba Mwenyezi Mungu. Tuendelee kutii masharti yale ambayo tumepatiwa. Na mimi sina shaka. Tukiongozwa na Mwenyezi Mungu kwa sababu hii ni inchi ya Mungu. Tutafaulu. Na tutashinda hii jangwa ambaye imekumba sio tu nchi yetu lakini dunia mzima lakini wale ambao watashinda ni wale ambao watajukua jukumu la kibinafsi jukumu la kibinafsi kusema mimi mimi binafsi nitafanya ile ambaye inatakikana kuhakikisha ya kwamba tumeshinda vita kati ya huu ugonjwa. Kwa hayo machache wenzangu naendelea kuwaombea Mwenyezi Mungu naendelea kuwaombea amani na naendelea kushukuru wote maofisa wa afya, maofisa wa usalama, maofisa wetu pia wa vyombo vya habari mbalimbali mbali, ambao wanaendelea kuungana pamoja na sisi kuhakikisha ya kwamba taifa letu liko na usalama tuwaendelea kukinga afya ya watu wetu na tuwaendelea na umoja wetu nasema Mungu awabariki nyote Mungu waendelee kulinda taifa letu la Kenya na tuendelee sisitize tena kutii masharti yale ambayo tumepatiwa na wale ambao wanahusika na mambo ya afya katika nchi yetu Asante ni sana. Ok.
Okay. This is KTN News.